the last year has seen an increase in discussions on car dependency. This can be seen in the rapid surge in popularity of the r slash fuck cars subreddit, as well as the popularity of several of these YouTubers who cover these sorts of topics. And I think this is probably due to how many people got to work from home, as well as drive with less traffic during the pandemic and realized how hellish their commute is. As well as, as older people age, uh, they're beginning to realize how awful car-only transit can be for them. Climate change is also motivating people to look into less energy-intensive modes of transit. And of course, I think people who spend a lot of time thinking about the climate, and as well as some parts of the left, have been talking about this for quite a while. But it is really pushing more into the mainstream now. Also, with wages being as low as they are, and the price of cars has probably driven this as well. And this can be seen that Gen Z is just not becoming car owners at the rate of previous generations. The reason I wanted to make this video rather than more of my typical history video topics is when I see and hear discussions about car dependency, people defending car dependency will often go, but what about rural areas? Now, as someone who's grown up in a trailer house next to a wheat field for the majority of my life, and then a certain amount of time grew up in rural small towns of at one point less than 100 people, another one less than 800 people, and one that had a few thousand, I don't think anybody could accuse me of being a detached urbanite. Um, as well as that whole mindset is really stupid. The majority of people live in urban areas. If anything, it's the rural people who are detached from the things impacting uh, the majority of people, uh, and especially as urbanization continues, which it is. Uh, th that statement gets even more stupid. The other issue I have with this is a lot of the times when people say they live in a rural area, and yes, I'm going to gatekeep here, they don't actually live in a rural area. They live in a single uh, family housing develop like suburban development on the edge of a large city that just happens to be near a cornfield. When I mean rural areas, I mean like where I grew up in western Kansas, where you're talking 200 miles from anything that could be reasonably considered a major city. And here's another issue. I often see people who are criticizing car dependency kind of say that, oh, well, I guess we can't fix rural areas, but well, that doesn't really matter. But here's the thing, and this is the secret of someone who grew up in a rural town. My rural town is more walkable and bikeable than your major city, probably. And this might come as shocking, uh, but I would bet it is easier to walk and bike within a majority of rural Kansas towns than quite a few of the largest cities in the United States. And a big part of why I hate large cities and continue to live in a rural area, which I get asked about a lot, why why you, you as a queer would want to stay in these places, but I fucking hate traffic. I hate driving in it. I hate having to be around it. And that's just not something I had to deal with in a small town. <laughs> During a few points in my time, I had to be around Atlanta, Georgia, where there is literally, like, a road that would take maybe 15 minutes to drive down would take hours in traffic and that's that's hell that's actual hell in my rural small town it was at most a six minute walk to the grocery store if even that far and which granted in the two towns i lived i lived somewhat close to the grocery store but even if i lived on the edge of town it was gonna be no more than eight minutes and it was probably literally two minutes to bike there compare this to some suburbs I was looking at around Kansas City, where you might be walking for multiple hours to get to a grocery store. And sometimes even then, not what I would consider a real grocery store. Dollar General or the gas station that has some milk is not really a grocery store. Instead, my like my small town walking along, you know, and sometimes there might not be sidewalks, but walking along these streets with, you know, 100-year-old oak trees, uh, You'd be walking along a barren, open sidewalk along cars going 60 miles per hour. So if anybody goes off the road, you're just dead. And the reasons this is the case in small towns is a lot of them were too poor to bulldoze their original downtowns, build giant parking lots and highways through them. Most of the housing is older and on smaller lots than what uh, a lot of single-family housing gets built on now. So they're even they're denser than some of these major cities. Uh, I think I did the math, and some of my small towns are like twice to three times as dense as some of these suburbs around Kansas City. Rural areas just aren't as much the problem. It's suburban areas. Like, let's take a look at example. So let's say I'm here in Osborne, Kansas, and we're going to say I live here. 
and I'm going to pretend I work at the library here, and I'm going to walk, and that is 15 minutes to work, and, you know, while some of these streets lack sidewalks, they're not busy roads, people are going to be going about 20 miles per hour, maybe 30 at most, you have trees giving you shade, so you're not walking in direct sunlight, uh, and then when I get off work, I can walk an additional six minutes to the grocery store, and then it's about a 20-minute walk back home. And here I'm picking a house that's closer to the edge of town, and this is going to, of course, be incredibly short if somebody bikes. And for the walk in the downtown area, I'm going to be walking on very slow roads. And a lot of these and these small towns are brick, and you're not going to get dozens of cars going at speeds that could kill you on brick. This is traffic calming. This is the, the thing the detached urbanites want. Another nearby town here is Downs, Kansas. It, again, is probably a 15-minute walk to the downtown, and where I'm probably going to work and where I'm next to my grocery store, never am I anywhere near traffic going over 25 miles per hour, if even that fast. Here in Mankato, Kansas, under 15 minutes to probably where I work and another five minutes to the grocery store. Along a brick line downtown, I can probably do other shopping there. I'm never walking along a busy road. I'm never near traffic that has a significantly high chance to kill me. And in these towns, you're not forced to cross at crosswalks. People just cross wherever. It's even better on a bike. Even though you're sharing the space with a car, you're probably only going near at most one or two cars on your whole ride. Because it's a small town and you don't have a sub like suburban people driving through residential streets to get to their, uh, their destination. You're not going to be crossing big parking lots uh, when you get there either. A lot of these towns don't even really have what I'd call real parking lots. Certainly nothing like major towns where you have hundreds of parking spaces for a store. It's like 10. And, you know, you can see in some of these satellite images and street view that some of these older buildings did get torn out and had some parking lots put there. But again, they're nothing compared to what you'll find in a big city. And a lot of these older downtowns, some of the times have narrower streets than you'll see in some areas, and certainly on the residential areas. And again, you have brick roads, and in some case, narrow streets. Those are both forms of traffic calming that people call for. And trust me, these towns work this way. I live there. I biked everywhere in town, and I only drove when I was going out to the farm to go work, which is certainly a lot less than a lot of these suburban places and big cities where you're taking a car to do literally anything, to go to the park, to get groceries, to do any form of shopping, and to get to work always. And compare this all to Kansas City, which I looked at. And for some parts of the city, it's, again, two hours to get to a grocery store. So that's four hours total if you don't want to drive. And you're probably walking on a 40 to 60 mile per hour road with very few safe signalized crossings. So again, you're going to be crossing unsafely. And the entire time you're walking... If any of those drivers are distracted, you know, drinking or just not skilled, they could lose control. And at 40 plus miles per hour, you'll die. Uh, you're, you're dead. And that's just not the case in these small towns. You know, a 20 mile per hour crash might still hurt a lot. You might be injured, but you're significantly less likely to die. And looking at these small towns, you have some features of what people would call mixed zoning. Uh, a lot of these older shops have housing above them uh or some of those have been changed into to ho like hotel rooms and it's not quite what people want in major cities but it's a lot closer and the reason this is this way is because the traditional form of development still persists because they didn't have the money for huge expensive car infrastructure and to rip this all down for parking lots and roads and again, they don't have to deal with people moving to the suburbs of the area and just creating huge traffic as they come into the town because everybody lives within the town. Now, I'm sure a couple of you are thinking, what about long distance travel? And that is where you get into some troubles. Like, I'll give you that for long distance travel, presently in these small towns, you 110% need a car. But the fact that in town, basically everything can be done without a car for the most part, and now, of course, there's issues there. Lack of sidewalks, which while fine for most people on bikes, it could be hard for someone in a scooter or a wheelchair. I'm not saying small towns are the ideal. I'm just saying they have a lot of features that these so-called attached urbanites that are complaining about car dependency are calling for. 
And one of the major issues, of course, again, is long distance travel. And this is a huge issue for people who are disabled and unable to drive because of it, which really includes anyone older. Reflexes and things decline with time, and it can be unsafe for them to drive once they get to a certain age, or they might be undergoing certain medical treatments where the drugs they're on prevents them from driving safely. And a family member is going to have to possibly drive them multiple hours to access health care because in these small towns, you don't have local health care access, which is a huge issue. And if you don't have that, you know, you might not be able to get health care access if you don't have someone to take you. But this is a mark against car dependence, not an argument for it. And there's some fixes that really could be done. And often I hear it's expensive to lay out the infrastructure and that there's no way you could run, say, rails to these small towns, but that's bullshit. Uh, prior to the 60s, most of these small towns still had passenger trains a few days a week. The rails already exist. You can't tell me you can't run rails to all these small towns because they already have rails going to these small towns. And a lot of these uh, smaller towns had service into the 70s, right up into the Amtrak era, where the routes got ditched before that. And many of them still have their train stations. And some into the 90s had bus services that eventually got discontinued. Now, running full passenger trains to all these places might not be worthwhile. That would be a decision for the population to make. Um, but Kansas has two major railways running through it. And honestly, I think we could connect that as some sort of regional rail. We have a Union Pacific and a BNSF mainline. One is running to Denver and the other one running to Pueblo. The BNSF line is currently used by Amtrak Southwest Chief. The Union Pacific line was used for the city of Salina and other regional service historically. And here's a map of rail service in the U.S. Of, in 1962. Maybe some of this is not fully needed. Some of these small towns have declined a lot since then, then some less than others. But I think bus service could work really well. You don't have congestion, so the bus is going to be faster, or at least the same speed as taking a car. Uh, but there really is rails already there, and it doesn't need to be high-speed rail. I don't get the obsession with high-speed rail. Uh, obviously, it's nice, but for to, to beat out cars, you don't need to be going 150 miles per hour. If you can go 60 miles per hour, 70 miles per hour, you're going to be out running the cars. If you can even hit 55, which is the speed on a lot of these rural roads, some of them, which granted people go over the speed limit constantly. Um, I don't think I've ever driven the speed limit on these rural highways. Uh, but the routes that the rails take is more direct than the roads. The roads are on squares where the rails run as the crow flies. So even going the same speed as a car, they're probably going to at least outpace it or at least be the same when you count boarding time and if you're going faster than that you're really going to beat out car travel plus that again provides the option for people who are unable to drive or don't want to drive could actually leave these small towns so a start would maybe just getting these two mainline routes running from colorado with some kind of connecting to the the front range route which people have been calling for in colorado and is on the amtrak 2035 map and KDOT has been looking at proposals to run rail service from Topeka to Kansas City. I think it's a good idea, but it should be expanded further, especially further west across the state to give access to these rural towns. And if you run across these two main lines, yeah, you're not hitting all of the small towns, but then, say from Salina, you could easily run bus service off to many of these small towns. It's not having to go very far. It doesn't need to be daily. It doesn't, you know, you don't need 15 minute service. You need a couple times a week, you know, and that greatly improves access for people and it would decrease some of the car trips. If you want to go even further, you could maybe attach a third line that runs up here through Concordia, Kansas, to Mankato and Colby and on to Oakley, where it could meet up with a more frequent service. Those two routes that I've been talking about would put most of Kansas within a 30 minute drive, especially with a third route mentioned of getting to the rail service, which would mean it while people would still end up needing cars. And again, I don't think the position of anyone is no four-wheel vehicles. The majority of car trips are not these multi across multiple town travel. Most car trips in the U.S. are people traveling to the grocery store, to work, to the park, to the public library, those sorts of trips. And if all that could be eliminated from having to go by car, and I think most people would choose not to, it's a huge decline in emissions and all the other problems that car dependency 
uh, causes, which I'm not going to go into because there's people who've explained that a lot better than me. With those three routes across Kansas, people could also maybe not even own a car in town and rent a car when they're traveling to the train station or, you know, take a bus. And sure, that would not be absolutely zero cars, but it would be a significantly less dependent on them and be a major quality of life improvement. And that's the thing. I just, I don't, I don't get the people arguing for car dependency and using rural areas as an argument. A majority of people live in cities. If only rural people were driving, that would still be a huge drop in emissions and all the other issues. Like, I don't get what car dependency provides for us. It, you know, what, what does it do? It lets us be isolated in our suburbs if we can't drive or don't want to drive. Uh, and as well as the, the low density makes people more isolated. We can enjoy particle pollution. We can continue poisoning the waterways with pollution from tailpipes and all the salt on the roads to keep them defrosted in the winter. And that, you know, salt going into fresh water is not good. We can waste more food because we have to make, you know, huge grocery trips instead of just a five minute trip to the store and just getting the things that you need for that day and maybe tomorrow. I could do that in a small town. I sure as hell can't do that in Kansas City. And I sure as hell can't do that in the majority of America. Yes, there is more walk-friendly areas. They do exist. Not all major cities are bad. I'm A lot of them are, though, in America. And a lot of them are probably worse than small towns, where I'm sure there's some that are probably better because you can walk to the grocery store and you have the option of being able to leave town or go on long-distance travel without a car, which isn't currently an option in rural America. Also... While I have your attention on this topic, there's something else with the, 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 the fuck cars discussion that also comes up in rural areas, which is fuck big trucks. As someone who grew up on a farm and did lots of farm work, fuck big stupid trucks. Whenever I see someone complaining about how big and unsafe they are, which is correct, some dipshit goes, well, some people work for a living. As if everyone buying these stupid $60,000 luxury trucks are fucking hardworking proles, and it's not just that their daddy owns a ranch. You don't need that power at that kind of size for farm work. I drove an older Ford truck that's pretty small compared to modern trucks. A lot of my job with that was hauling several hundred gallons of diesel fuel to our tractors and combines, cutting down trees and hauling the logs, and that truck did fine. And I don't quite remember how tall that truck is because I don't quite remember which year it is uh, and the exact model of Ford truck, but it's from the late 80s. And it had to be about five foot ten to the roof because my brother uh, and people I know who are over six foot, it only came up to their chin. And compare that to a modern truck where you have this person who is six foot one standing in front of it and just the hood is pretty much covering them up. My old truck just wasn't that big. And the engine compartment on these is just stupid for no reason. And these things just continue to become more like rolling bunkers. I mostly have only driven cars from the 80s and 90s, and I uh, once drove a more modern Ford F-150 once, and the visibility is terrible. I drove a modern Toyota sedan, and the visibility is terrible compared to cars from the 80s and 90s. Sure, it's a lot safer if the driver rolls or gets in an accident with another car, but it's extremely hard to see pedestrians. Those huge pillars to your side really block crosswalks. The thing, too, with sedans is they can tow things... A car, a sedan that we had on the farm uh, was rated to tow up to 5,000 pounds as long as the trailer had brakes. And we did have one larger truck on the farm because we needed a ton of horsepower. And that was for hauling those huge corn headers. And so sure, if you were hauling a 18-row corn header around for your combine, you might need a larger vehicle with larger towing capacity. But just like someone who's on a mining site might need a giant dump truck or other vehicles... You don't need to be driving that to take your kids to school. That can stay on the work site. And the people who really need trucks, the majority of them don't need the massive crap being made today. Their luxury vehicles, their status symbols, don't fall into the U.S. culture war bullshit where anybody who owns a truck and wears boots is a hardworking prole, and the trans girl who works at McDonald's is not. A lot of the petty bourgeoisie, for whatever reason are really beginning to love to LARP as in this sort of fake populism of owning a truck and wearing boots. If you need a vehicle to toss wood or tools in the back, you could just get a K-truck. They're not really here in the U.S., but they should be. 
And I just felt like all this needs to be said as somebody who worked on a farm and used trucks on a daily basis to point out how stupid and pointless these modern status symbols are. They're not the tools used by hardworking, you know, working class people. They're petty bourgeois people, people who I think feel some kind of anxiety about coming off as too wealthy, but they also don't want to buy a cheap non-luxury vehicle and look like a poor, but they want to drive something that symbolizes hard work rather than some kind of luxury vehicle. So in conclusion, a lot of small towns have the sort of dense and sometimes still mixed zone downtowns that urbanists are calling for. The lack of huge highways and strodes going through them, though some have strodes on the edge of town, but in that case, they don't really act as barriers to walking. They have grocery stores within walking distance of all the housing, though some small towns are having their grocery stores closed, but that's a separate issue. Also, big trucks are mostly stupid for 99.9% .9 of the people who buy them, and they're not something people need to be using to get around on a daily basis. I hope you like this video. I wanted to say something about this as it's been getting on my nerve. Watching people defend car dependency on the basis that some rural people might need them is just stupid. And also keep in mind, a lot of the people who are probably calling you a detached urbanite probably just live in a suburb with a cornfield next to it. Now, I'm going to get back into more history content soon. I want to do something a bit less research intensive and get my thoughts out on this video uh, as I'm recovering from long COVID. I have no promises on the timeline for my history videos. I'm still really sick and I'm still pretty burnt out from it, though I am slowly getting better. 